What have fossil fuels ever done for us? Life before fossil fuels. Before fossil fuels, we had the Romans in Britain. The Romans brought sanitation, medicine, education, wine, public order, irrigation, roads, a fresh water system, and public health. They also kept the peace. That's what the Romans did for us. But life in pre-industrial Britain had changed little for the better since the Romans had left 1200 years previously. Energy was provided by what today we call renewables. Wood, charcoal, straw, and dried dung. There was also some rudimentary mechanical power in the form of wind and water mills, which was weather dependent. Most work was done by humans, horses, and oxen. Travel was by sail, horse, or foot. It was a miserable existence. The forest and the farm provided heat and energy. England's 4 million population in 1600, which was only slightly higher than the population estimates for Roman Britain, could only be sustained if most people lived in the countryside and worked the land. The average person was no better off than in Roman times. Life expectancy, standard of living, and stature were no higher than in the days of Julius Caesar. People were tied to the land. There wasn't enough energy resources to sustain more than 4 million people in England and 5 million people in the UK. This compares with 56 million and 67 million people today. When the population fell, notably during the Black Death of 1350, standards of living went up. It was called the Dark Ages for a reason. There wasn't a lot of cheap and reliable energy, which meant it was dark. Britain's Industrial Revolution Something miraculous happened in the time of Shakespeare. In response to dwindling forest resources, Britain switched to burning coal. Coal's energy density, or bang for buck heat generation, was much higher than wood. It could be more easily transported. It quickly became the fuel of choice for domestic heating, as well as in energy intensive industries like salt production or brewing beer. Coking coal replaced charcoal in iron manufacturing, which could now be done on a bigger scale. Britain became great by embracing fossil fuels. Coal went from 15% of primary energy in 1600 to 50% by 1650, 77% by 1800, and by 1850, 91%. Human and animal labor was over 50% of energy consumption in 1600, but only 7% by 1850. Coal energy freed up time and resources for other economic activities. By 1750, the UK population was 6 million, and by 1850, it was 18 million, four and a half times the population in 1600. Yet unlike in pre-industrial times, real incomes rose from just over £1,000 in 1600 to just under £3,000 by 1850. At the beginning of the 19th century, Britain's industrial revolution accelerated with the invention of the steam engine, which converted coal's compact chemical energy into reliable mechanical energy. The steam engine revolutionized travel through the building of the first national railway network in the 1840s and then with steamships replacing sail. Britain's Royal Navy ruled the waves, which facilitated the globalization of trade. Steam engines transformed manufacturing through the invention of the belt drive. They replaced water wheels and windmills for pumping, grinding, and sawing. And in the construction industry, mechanical pile drivers and excavators were adopted for heavy lifting. By 1865, 
the economist William Jevons proclaimed that with coal, almost any feat is possible or easy. Without it, we are thrown back into the laborious poverty of early times. Near the end of the 19th century, more powerful and efficient coal-fired steam engines began to produce reliable, clean and efficient, silent and adjustable form of power, electricity. The first of many world-changing uses of electricity was the light bulb in 1879, which produced light a hundred times brighter than candles. This was followed in the 20th century with the invention of the refrigerator, the washing machine, the radio, the phone, and then more recently, the TV, the personal computer, and the internet. Britain's use of coal power was far ahead of other developing nations. While fossil fuels achieved total energy dominance in the UK by 1850, other European countries still had to rely on their human and animal populations to do the work. This meant a higher standard of living for Britain and relative poverty and misery for other countries. This economic power, fueled by coal, was perhaps the key enabler of the British Empire. During the Napoleonic Wars, Britain derived nearly 80% of its energy from coal, while France was powered to the same degree by firewood. Boney didn't stand a chance against the coal-fired Iron Duke of Wellington. When other countries embraced fossil fuels, their economies caught up. This happened across the globe. In the US at the end of the 19th century, Japan in the 1930s and 50s, and more recently, in China in the 1980s. This was a reminder that political power was and remains closely linked to access to cheap and reliable energy. But coal, the steam engine, and the British hegemony of the 18th and 19th centuries was to be supplanted in the 20th century by America and the discovery and commercialization of the superior fossil fuel. The Discovery of Oil and Pax Americana The American search for oil was initially motivated by the growing scarcity of whale oil for use in lighting and soap. If coal saved the British forest, oil saved the whale. The US oil boom began in Pennsylvania in 1859. By 1880, the US produced 85% of the world's crude oil. By 1925, this share had fallen to 75%. During World War II, the US was still two thirds of global oil production. Hitler's Third Reich had to rely on synthetic fuel from coal, which eventually ran out. This was an uneven contest. By the 1880s, the first internal combustion engines using refined oil products, gasoline, diesel, and kerosene, which all had even lighter energy density than coal, were cleaner to burn and easier to move and store, replaced steam engines, first in shipping, then trains, then cars. It is often forgotten that gasoline cars accounted for only 22% of automobiles built in 1900, compared to coal steamer cars at 40% and electric cars at 38%. Steamer and electric cars couldn't match the power to weight ratio of internal combustion engines powered by gasoline or diesel, their economy or their range. Cars powered by refined oil proved superior. The first modern car was produced by Mercedes in Germany in 1901, followed by the first inexpensive mass produced car, Henry Ford's Model T in America in 1908. 1903 saw the first aeroplane flight in North Carolina based on the light internal combustion engine developed and flown by Orville and Wright. Crude oil has been an incredibly flexible source of energy. Its different properties could be isolated by refining and used for a variety of different purposes. Lubricants, asphalt, synthetic fibers, 
paints, coatings, detergents, pesticides, resins, adhesives. Today, fossil fuels still represent over 85% of our primary energy consumption and are essential in the production of plastics, steel, cement, nitrogen fertilizers, and silicon, the material basis for our civilization. If you desire a world without fossil fuels, prepare for Western civilization to crumble. Not our words, but those of Elon Musk. What have fossil fuels ever done for us? The Industrial Revolution, of which Britain was the earliest pioneer, substituted renewable energy with fossil fuels, replaced animal and human labour with electricity and internal combustion engines. Within just a few generations, it created an entirely new world, which was also indisputably a better world. Mankind was no longer a beast of burden. In terms of physical labour, our embrace of fossil fuels meant that the average person in the UK today has the equivalent of 250 people working for them non-stop, day and night, without complaint. Today we use 20 times more energy per capita than in 1650. The real costs of energy have fallen by 90% over the same time period. This is the main cause of our living standards, defined by GDP per capita, rising by 30 times. Free industrial economies had 80% of their population employed in agriculture. By 1861, England had 21%. It's 1% today. The share of the US population who were farmers in 1800 was 83%. Now it's 2%. With our utilization of mechanized farming equipment and fertilizers and pesticides derived from fossil fuels, since 1800, the human labor needed to produce a kilogram of wheat was reduced from 10 minutes to less than two seconds. Only a very small share of the population now engages in delivering civilization's energy and the materials that compromise our modern world. This has freed up over 95% of the population who have forgotten what fossil fuels have done for them. Without cheap and reliable energy brought by fossil fuels, we would all have to re-embrace agrarian living. Like Tom and Barbara on the 1970s sitcom The Good Life. And we would struggle to produce enough food for Britain's extra 62 million people. Who really wants to go back to living like that? In 1800, horse-drawn carriages moved at 6 miles per hour. Now planes, trains and automobiles move at 550, 180 and 60 miles per hour respectively, speeds that would have previously been thought impossible. A rider on the Pony Express would change horses every 10 to 15 miles. Internal combustion engine cars can travel for hundreds of miles on the same tank of fuel, whilst aeroplanes can fly halfway around the world. A horse can pull a wheeled vehicle six times its own body weight. That's around 12,000 pounds. Trains can pull 18,000 times this, planes half a million times this, and the biggest ships one million times this. Our drastic improvement in living standards has been achieved by replacing renewable wood and medieval windmills and water wheels with more sophisticated and useful fossil fuels. If the cheap and reliable energy brought by fossil fuels cannot be adequately replaced, by returning to those energy resources our ancestors gave up on as inferior, then it logically follows that we risk returning to pre-industrial standards of living. So apart from the steam engine, the railways, mechanized labor, steamships, the light bulb, heated homes, hot water, fume-free cooking, refrigeration, the automobile, the aeroplane, the British Empire, the Green Revolution, urbanization, globalization, liberation from heavy work and drudgery, creating time for leisure, sport and education, 
longer, healthier lives, mass consumption, the radio, the television, the computer, the mobile phone, and the internet, and a 30-fold increase in our standard of living, what have fossil fuels ever done for us? <laughs>